and, uh, and I promised myself at the beginning of this tour that I wasn't going to say the same thing show in and show out soon, but I've kind of settled into these stories that I do before particular songs. And, uh, and so I tell the story, and um, I had, uh, I was living at home with my parents. I lived in my parents' house on Staten Island. Um, I was sharing a room with my two brothers. Uh, I was in the bottom bunk of a bunk bed. Um, and I had just auditioned for the band. Um, my youngest brother was sleeping across the room and I was on the bottom bunk. My middle brother was on top, on the top bunk. And, um, and everybody had gone to work that day. Well, my, my parents went to work, my sister and brothers went to school. And I was home by myself, and uh, the phone was ringing in the morning. And it must have been about 10, 10.30. And I heard the phone ring. This was prior to answering machines. There were no answering machines. The phone just kept ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. And I was sleeping. And I was like, I'm not going to answer the goddamn phone. I'm just not going to answer it. And it just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. It must have rang about 20 times, I swear to God. Finally, I said, fuck. I gotta go answer the goddamn phone. I get up and I answer the phone and it's Roger Powell and he says, welcome to Utopia. I just auditioned the day before. So the next day I, I met Todd in Manhattan at his apartment, he had a, a, a townhouse on Jane Street, right? It was on Jane or Horatio? Horatio. It was on Horatio Street. And uh, we drove up to Woodstock and I started rehearsing with the band. Um, and it was uh, just, uh, the, they had just released the Faithful record prior to that. Um, and so part of the Utopia tour was promoting Faithful, uh, his, his solo record. <clears throat> and so we did a lot of songs from Faithful on that, that first, those first couple of tours, like Black and White, um, Do Ya, uh, Love of the Common Man, and, and a couple of other songs uh, to promote Faithful. Um, and we did this one song which is a ballad, uh, and, but it's such a beautiful, beautiful song. Well, part of the reason that I started playing music was not only because I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan and I said, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm gonna do. Don't need to go to school anymore. He's nine years old. Don't need to go to school. Don't need to do anything else. I'm gonna be a Beatle when I grow up. That's <laughs> um, uh, Or at least a musician. And, uh, and it's because music speaks to me. And, uh, and there are certain pieces of music that just touch me in, in a way that nothing else in life does. I'm, I mean, my children, I love my kids to death. I love my dog. Um, I, 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 I love a lot of things, but, but music does something to me. And I think that a lot of human beings share this emotion. It's something you remember. You remember a chord change or a lyric or a melody, and it stays with you for the for your entire life. And um, when you're when, when you're sad, you think about music, or when you're happy, you think about music, or you know, at, at different times, not all the time, because then you'd be a real weirdo. But all the time? Well, you're a weirdo, but I love you anyway. Um, and so, uh, so this particular song that we did in that, on those first couple of tours that I did with the band, I just, it just spoke to me and I love it and I want to share it with you.